Hey, and welcome back to the podcast. Solomon Timothy is here, and he is from ClickX.io, and Solomon is a highly accomplished entrepreneur. He has over 17 years of experience in marketing and sales, and he's also the co-founder and CEO of One IMS, which is a leading inbound marketing and sales agency. So we are going to go into many possible directions here, right? We could talk about leveraging marketing and sales. We could talk about angel investing or startup advising or so much more, but we'll find out what Solomon's all about, what makes him tip, what makes him unique, and what we can learn from him. So Solomon, glad to be speaking with you. Hey, thank you so much, Robert, for having me. This is exciting, especially after hitting a thousand episodes. That's amazing. Yes. I, I go on a lot of podcasts. I try to serve as much as I can. This is my way of you know, creating impact, going and helping someone else, right? Putting some oil into your fire that you're building for a thousand episodes. I got to give you some serious props there. That is we amazing. Have to you have to be persistent. And you know, you're you're making me think that I haven't thought about this for like like 25 years. When I was like 17 years old, I I discovered this technology where you could like use a camera and create like uh -huh. a panoramic view. And this was before smartphones. And I went to one realtor, one like real estate office, and he was sort of kind of interested. And I didn't really follow up, didn't really go back. And I just I felt like that was like a missed opportunity. And I, it makes me think now, like. I should have gone back. I should have called 10 times. I should have visited right. 39 more real estate offices. And so ever since that moment, a decades ago, I'm just like, you have to be persistent and and uh, you have to kind of follow through and you have to get a good enough sample size to see if something will work. And even if it only sort of works, you tweak the system. And so that's the kind of energy I'm excited to jump into and find out about what you're all about. So we gave a little bit of an mm -hmm. intro, but in your own words, what are you all about? What is your elevator pitch? Yeah, um, absolutely. I help struggling entrepreneurs with their lead generation and customer acquisition, right? Um, and the reason I made that the, the shortest elevator pitch is because if you want to grow, you got to figure out lead generation and, and customer acquisition. You know, there's a myth that is if you build it, they will come. It, you, you can build the best app in the world and launch it on the app store. You won't get any downloads. Why? Because nobody knows about it. There's no distribution. You're, you know, unless you're like an influencer, but, you know, Mr. Beast launches it. Yeah, he's got great distribution, right? Like if people know him, he just has to drop a video. But if you're a nobody, which I call them basically like you have obscurity, people don't know you exist. Well, Robert, you made a thousand podcast episodes. People know you. <laughs> If you made three episodes and you're in the, you know, Spotify podcast section, you're probably not going to get a lot of downloads. So no matter how hard you try, right? Like the distribution is so key and I help with that. Wonderful. And, you know, you're touching on something that I think is maybe counterintuitive or maybe like is, I don't know if it's like not popular or just people don't want to think about it. This whole idea that there's the, the work that you do, like client work or our product or, or an app or something. And that's like a little small piece of it. But then the promotion and the, the publicity and the repetition, that's like so right. much more time and so much more work. And a lot of people don't want to even talk about that or think about that, right? Like you put out a book and maybe you spend, uh, you know, all these hours on it, but you have to spend even more hours kind of doing like a year long going on podcasts or touring the country. And so people kind of maybe think, okay, I made my app, I made my business. Says, cool, I'm done. Now I just have to wait for everything to roll in like right. Mr. Beast. But guys like you and me are thinking like, there, there's not enough time in the world. There's not enough hours in a day to do that kind of promoting. And I like how you kind of broke this down into two pieces, right? You said that there's like kind of like the lead generation, lead generation. and then there's right. the converting into customers. And that kind of makes it, it easy because you can see where the herd is and what kind of needs to be done. And so help us get started here. Like if some business out there, like the typical yeah. kind of before picture that comes to you, they say, hey, I need your help to rise above this obscurity that you're talking about. What's the, the first logical step? How do we get started on the getting the leads and converting them into customers? Yeah, and I think I'll go back and just sort of touch on the thing that you said. Most entrepreneurs were practitioners. We like the doing of what the business does. We like, for a carpenter, right? You're just, in, you're interested in building out sets and furniture, or whatever it is. And we think that is the business when in reality, it's getting people to the furniture store or your online Shopify site or whatever 
is equally important. It's like literally 50% of your job should be managing the shop, but getting people to there. And oftentimes they think 80% of the job is how well my, my studio looks, or does that make sense? My, my gym, my workout, whatever business you insert it. Unfortunately, the reason why I have a great business is because there's more and more entrepreneurs who stuck in believing that what they do is the only part of the business that matters, right? And so my job is to get them the customers that they want to get because they have growth goals. They have projections. Don't get me wrong. We want a million downloads, but it's just an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't mean a million people downloaded the app. It doesn't mean you have a hundred new customers. It doesn't mean you have a wait list. It doesn't mean you're going to be sold out, right? Entrepreneur, book author, speaker, coach, you name it. So what we do is we break that down. Uh, we have a very basic customer acquisition growth formula. We call this acquisition plus retention equals growth, right? Very simple. If you want to create wealth, you got to acquire wealth and you also have to retain the wealth <laughs> to grow. If we acquired a lot of users to our app and we lost all of them, meaning we don't have any retention, then we don't have growth. So the idea of lead generation and customer acquisition comes to basically trying to get people acquiring new leads every single day, right? That's the acquisition part. Then I got to nurture those leads and turn them into customers, paying customers, paying users, paying whatever you want to call it. And that's what we do every single day. So if you want to, if you want to break it down, you just got to figure out this formula, the growth formula. What do I need to do to acquire more customers? And how do I keep these customers from leaving to maybe another service, my competition, another provider, or they just don't have this problem anymore. Or you know what I mean? Like they no longer need me. So how do I fix that? So they need me like a Netflix subscription, <laughs> right? Like a gym membership or whatever it is, they keep coming back and wanting more. Instead of just coming back to get the same thing, think of like Apple, how do we make them spend more money with us? Like Apple just raised their Apple One subscription, which you know, they were robbing me to begin with. It was like $10 a month. It's not $20 a month. So we're not spending more money with Apple, right? So that's an ideal situation that you want to be in. And you know, you, you like you generate all these little ideas in my head here because I'm thinking uh, like lately I've been using some of these different like AI tools, right? And there's always like new ones every day from like captions and, and video and, and uh, things like that. And you're making me think that uh, whenever I'm like looking for a new sort of software solution, it might be like to solve some problem or I might want to replace something I'm using. I feel like the clock is ticking with me, right? Like I'm just like, I do a Google search. I look at the top results. I look at like who's running ads. And I think maybe those are a little like more, uh, more sophisticated and who's got like blog posts. And I'm just feeling like I've got like five minutes, 10 minutes to let's to just to try one of these. And I go and usually there's like a free trial or a free download. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, let me install it. And even that has me impatient. And then many times I might jump in and like not revisit, but then I'll get like an email saying like, hey, did you generate your first project? Right. Or look, we ought to generated a project for you. Do you want to go and check it out? And they kind of do, there's like kind of this uh, from the, the acquisition side, I feel like there's right. a uh, kind of a race against the clock. And then from the retention side, there's kind of like almost like a gamification. And so that's just what comes to mind as far as kind of the, these ideas. But as far as you kind of helping these clients of yours, like what, is there any kind of like fun stories or techniques or just things that we should know about as far as solving this acquisition and this retention problem? Yeah. So uh, every single day, like I said, this is, this is where I mentioned the word like struggling entrepreneurs. And the reason I say that is uh, lots of folks, they have a goal. Um, you know, they're not necessarily struggling because they think it wasn't, you know, we're, we're at the end of one year going into the next year. Right. So people set goals for 2023. Did they hit those goals? And if they didn't hit the goals, that's the people that I'm, I'm I'm helping every day because they raise their hands and say, hey, look, I planned on making, you know, $250,000 a quarter or per month or per week or 10 million this last year. We only hit 8 million. And, and I know my competition did 15. And I don't know what we're doing wrong or what we're doing right. Can you help? And this happens every single day in boardrooms. 
the CFO or the finance person says, yep, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to hit our, you know, goal this quarter unless we change something, unless we do something. And so customer after customer, they're, they can sit there all day, day long with a projection sheet or Excel spreadsheet and get the investor to be all happy. But somebody has to crank out that ad that you saw, right, for, for that download. And somebody has to make sure email drip sequence are actually being created and sent out. And someone else who's worried about creating content for all the platforms from YouTube to Instagram to all of that. That's the reality of the world. There isn't any company out there with enough bodies in their marketing department that can do this flawlessly because everybody needs to create more content. Everybody needs more help on their Google ads, right? Like everybody needs more marketing automation. Now that you mentioned AI, like, well, we got to infuse AI into all of these things. It's a never ending request. And, and quite sadly, like you mentioned, that consumer is a moving target. What you're excited about today, tomorrow, you might be a vegetarian and you don't even care about AI tools. You're just going to go into farming. I joke around this with the office. Like you might be like, I'm going to buy some land here in Northern California. I'll just start farming, right? Like then I have to make sure that I get you while you are still excited about my AI tool I just built. <laughs> because tomorrow you might no longer be interested in this thing. So it's really, really difficult to keep all these balls in the air. Um, I would say the best story that I got is when we not only helped our customers, like for instance, we have several customers who sold their companies. They sold their company, but when we went, met with them, they were a tiny little warehouse in Chicago somewhere with like three salespeople. And to sell a business like that to a publicly traded company means that we really cranked out the acquisition and the retention game. That means that we went from obscurity to what we say market dominance. Because you wouldn't buy as you you as a big massive company, publicly traded company, wouldn't buy some little shop, right? Like they're because they're not they're not desperate for some I you know technology or something like that. They want to buy companies that are growing so they can put all of their you know people and team and technology and blow it up and maybe even sell it. Does that make sense? Like that's the only reason they're in there. They would do that. And so what we had to do is, even though they were a tiny little shop, I'm originally from Chicago. So all my clients are in Chicago, like 99.9%. I don't even need to go to another state to make money. This is this is wild. People think you gotta be all over the world to make money. I'm like, dude, just help the people in three to five mile radius. You'll be more, you'll be making more money than you could imagine. So these customers, we grew them up. So when they start Googling these very sophisticated terms, engineers are Googling it. They look like massive companies online because of the way their website looks, the way their live chat's popping up, the way they have video content and everything else. People engage with that content, fill out the form. You have a salesperson who's getting more influx of sales calls, and that's how we help them grow their business. When there's more calls coming in than what the salespeople can do, and they need to hire an HR person to then get, <laughs> get some help here, that's good. That's how you change from a projection on an Excel spreadsheet to actually growing a company. As long as the entrepreneur is committed to keeping up with the growth, right? Then sometimes they get too, you know, uh, I, I would say they get too comfortable and then they might not be willing to make all the adjustments. But if they're listening to all of our feedback, which all we're doing is telling them what we're seeing on the dashboards, right? Like the average customer is waiting 30 seconds to talk to you or, or if you're getting drop off in your funnel, this is where it's happening. As long as they're willing to tweak the system, they can continuously grow. And that's a dream for any entrepreneur out there. I love it. And so you, you mentioned this term like system and what comes to mind is like there's like different factors or the different inputs and outputs and the kind of, you know, values, like uh, number numeric values. And so sure. and it seems like as far as your... Uh, your your magic, your secret sauce here. Like before we recorded, you were asking me about like all the the knowledge I've soaked up from all these podcasts, and you kind nice. of embody 
you kind of embody the best lessons, right? It's like lesson number one is kind of know your numbers and, and systematize so that way everything's running consistently like a machine. And then number two is get it working so well of a machine that it can become turnkey and you can sell it if, if needed. And if, even if you don't sell it, it's something that runs very well. And then kind of the, the bridging of the gap there to get from a business that's starting or struggling or growing into one that's successful is to tap onto some of this kind of marketing and psychology that you're mentioning here, uh, like looking right. at the, the web page and seeing the bottlenecks and the live chat mm -hmm. and the video. But it seems like out of all the things we could look at as far as the marketing psychology, it seems like number one is the immediacy, is capturing the attention span. And like, do they are they searching for a solution to their problem? Give it to them now. Is there some kind of a right. delay? as far as getting to it or on the webpage, shorten that and make it just more amazing than anyone else in their competitors. And so there's just, there's so much to, to think about and, and just, it feels like one of the biggest problems in the, in the world of like growing yeah. a company. But as far as what you've seen, as far as like these companies that you've helped and the things you've done, would you say, is there like a number one low hanging fruit that we all mess up? Is there something that we could all just kind of say, hey, yes. out of everything I could do, what's just something simple fixable now today? Yes, 100%. Um, I'm going to break down that uh, growth formula just one more bit. So we have the acquisition plus retention equals growth. So inside the acquisition, there's two things that every business has to do. This is something you've done very well without knowing that you had to do it. <laughs> and uh, and most businesses, they get the, the parts confused. So there's two things that's actually happening. If I'm a fish market, is that okay for an example? I sell fish, fresh fish. We catch them. You buy water, you get it. So super organic fish. Maybe it's like, you know, not farmed. This is like, I don't know. It's the best fish you can get. And it's fresh. You have two kinds of people that you need to sell to. The first kind of people are the people that are already looking for fish. Right? That's, that's called capturing the demand. That's what we call it. Just capture the demand of the people that are already looking. That's low hanging that you're talking about. The second kind of people that I need to sell to grow my fish market is people that don't know that they want fish. So I'm creating demand for my fish market. That's way harder. The reason I said you've done that very well is because in the beginning you were creating the demand. You're like, hey, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this thing, right? It was harder. But after a while, 900 episodes later, you just have to capture the demand. People already are looking. They're just going to come to you because the universe of Apple, Spotify, whatever, is going to show your episode when they're looking because you've been so consistent. So what we have to do is hold up a sign and say, fish store to your right, or you know what I mean? Next exit. That's 90% of, like, you can just grow just by capturing the demand of the people that are in the market right now looking for a fish market, but there's nobody showing a sign there. They're sort of like wandering. They're Googling. How's that for an example? They're putting it in their GPS, coffee shop. And if you're not doing anything to capture the demand, and most of these clients I'm talking about, all we had to do is capture the demand. The engineer was already searching for a specific type of problem they're trying to fix in their company. Boom, my customer popped up. Easy, right? Like. That's the low hanging fruit. Now, if my client wanted to create the demand, I have to now go to engineers to educate them of a different way of solving the problem than they are currently used to. That's the status quo. That's harder. That's like convincing people to change, you know, <laughs> from toothpaste to some other thing. That's right. way harder. Now we will get to that once we maximize the capturing of the demand. That's how we break it down. Was that helpful? <laughs> it is, yeah, it is helpful. And I can I can see how there are a lot of business owners where maybe they, they know some of this or they, they've heard of some of this or they've thought of some of this, but there's a difference between uh, kind of knowing something and focusing on it and implementing it. And you and I were talking a few minutes here ago about this idea that you're you're in the business and you're growing the business and you're you know marketing the business and things like that. And so I can imagine that there are 
uh, business owners out there who who want more, but they're overwhelmed, they're struggling, they're right. just they're they they never have enough time to do some of these uh, these very doable things that can be done of running the ads and making the content and doing the SEO, right. and they could use some help with that. And so, as far as them starting that kind of conversation with you and your company, how does someone know if they're like a good fit as far as like size and industry for you, and what can you do for them? What's yeah. the next step call to action? Yeah, so my job is to make the the brand owner, the CEO, bring this kind of problems to their awareness. Because at the end of the day, I don't have a little fire extinguisher here, but that's what we do as entrepreneurs. I have like two of them in the other room. We're fighting fires. You're like, it's seven o'clock and I still have four more hours of work to do. I can't believe it. The last thing on their mind is, oh boy, am I showing up on the top of Google search or how is my ads looking like? That's the last thing that they're worried about, right? So my job in these going on podcasts, creating my own content and creating a books and all the things that I do, webinars every day, <laughs> is to bring to awareness that, hey, you're looking at scale. Like you said, they may not have the systems, which is why they're working until seven o'clock at night in the first place, but you have growth goals. Doing more of the same thing that you're doing, you're not going to achieve it. Staying late in the office, working harder, will not double the revenue. It just won't. But that's what more and more entrepreneurs think about, right? Like they're just like, oh, I, I know how to solve it. I'll just work more hours. Actually, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's counterintuitive. It's not going to work. What they truly need is to figure out, hey, I need to change the way I acquire customers and I retain my customers, period. So once they have that realization, man, I have tons and tons of free resources that they can do to implement this for themselves on their own, but, but of course, people say, "Well, that's not my business. I don't want. I don't want to do that. I, I'd rather be doing the thing that I do every day, which is furniture building or whatever it is that they do, right? Or manufacturing, tech, SaaS, HR. Um, I want to work with somebody like you. And typically, what they do is they, you know, they ask us for a free consult or whatnot, and we'll dive in and we'll do a complete analysis of their technology stack. Tell them like, for you to do this right." You're going to have to change a lot. You may have to throw out your website because it doesn't do anything. It's not giving you any ROI. And what CRM are you using? Uh, what's your marketing automation? And let me be honest, constant contact is not marketing automation, <laughs> right? Like these are the kind of conversations. It may be a fit. It may not be a fit. But what I care more about and the reason why I give all of this information away, people ask me, why do you go on so many podcasts? Because I want to help as many entrepreneurs as possible fix it. And I know I can't help everybody, right? Like I only have so many hours. I only have so big of a team, but I know that if we can add value, that goes a long way. I want them to listen to this episode and say, boy, I don't know if I'm wasting my time creating demand or I'm just capturing demand. Like that's a new concept to so many people, right? Am I doing enough job in nurturing my elites and also nurturing my customers? Because if I don't nurture my customers, those are the ones that are going to leave. My retention it's not, do you see what I'm saying? Like, so I got to keep up with that and I got to keep up with this. And so they start thinking, like you said, systematically looking at the numbers, the KPI. So they don't have to work harder. They just have to work smarter. This is, this is like, it's not complicated. Nothing we talk about is complicated. Why? Because for the last 20 years, we've been doing it and we failed plenty. <laughs> I mean, in all aspects of getting, like you said, one of the hardest things for a business to do is get customers. It's almost easier to create the thing or the product or service than to get a customer. Do you agree? Like most companies go out of business because it wasn't that their product wasn't good. It's because they don't know how to get customers. So they didn't have enough money to pay the bills. I said, forget about this. This is a bad business. It wasn't a bad business. It was either they were lazy or didn't figure out the engine to get customers. Because there are average products in the marketplace with great distribution that are crushing the guys with great product and average distribution. Do you agree or no? I agree. And and, and there's the a lot to think with about. Three yeah. star, the plumber with three star reviews is crushing it because this guy shows up every hour on top of Google while the guy with five star reviews has two jobs a day. Right. And and it's like um, I mean, you're you're mentioning just a few traps that are easy to fall into, right? And there are things that that can and should be done building a business that 
are maybe there's a difference between like simple and obvious, right? They're like someone like you says, you know, here's these things you should do. Have your CRM figured out, have your marketing figured out. But if someone maybe doesn't know these things, it's not their fault. They're not stupid. There's there's nothing wrong with them. It's just they they're not they're not taking the, the correct ac actions. And like you mentioned, this trap there of kind of getting lazy or comfortable or taking shortcuts with the same customers, right? And you just have this pool of customers and you say, hey, I'll invent new services or I'll, I'll do new, have new products and I'll just give them to the same customers. And that seems like uh, almost inventing another job, whereas there's alternatives such as get your product and your service really dialed in and then get a right. steady lead, like lead flow of customers. And so it just seems like there's a better way for a lot of these business owners to be acting. And as you said, like instead of working harder, kind of work more strategically, and so how That's do they right. do that? Like you mentioned about things like you can have this conversation, there are resources. Yeah. What's the so, URL? What's the homework assignment? Absolutely. I think uh, the URL would be oneims.com. You mentioned it uh, in the conversation. They can fill out their information with amazing folks on staff. The reason is we're consultants, we fix problems, right? So you're not going to be talking to a salesperson like we call certain companies and all they want to do is try to sell you. We just want to help people because we understand that not everybody's a good fit because they may not have the resources, the tools, or the right niche, and, and maybe the, the lifetime value of the customer is not big enough to make such an investment. But we'll at least guide them in the right direction, because that's what we really care about. We want to make sure that we can make a huge impact. We're continuing to evolve as a company to make things more affordable, more accessible, and more of that. But at the end of the day, what we really care about is you as the entrepreneur, knowing where your blind spots are. I think that's really, really key, because people that are consuming content that are listening, they're actively looking to improve their business, they're improving their life, right? Like they're investing into content like this. What we want to be is that resource that gives them the way. Does that make sense? Like, hey, this is the route. And I love talking about this thing. You know, I'll do, I'll do this like seven hours a day if I can, you know, and I'll work the next seven hours to do my real job. But the reason why this is really important for us is that this is one of the biggest struggles. Like you said, every company needs it. I pay attention to people's trucks and the back of their, you know, the magnet they put on the side of them. Like everywhere we look, everybody's hustling really hard to get customer acquisition right. So if I can give them another tip, another resource to move them along. And for me, it's not like we'll get more customers than we need. We just have to crank on our own, <laughs> our own customer acquisition engine. But what I cannot do is the impact that we can draw from this podcast episode. That's what I care a lot about. And I can tell you care a lot and that you have this passion and you've given us so much already. And, you know, what comes to mind is there, there's this concept of doing things one day at a time. Right. And that it's not like you could go to go to school and do nothing for four years. And then on the very last day, say, hey, let me just cram for all these tests and pass all my classes. It's, it's impossible. And it's not, yeah. uh, and so so many times it's tempting to kind of sit around and not be taking these actions, but it's important to learn the little tidbits and apply the little tidbits and kind of yeah. inch along and let some of these ideas uh, kind of, you know, get figured out. And so you said that web address is oneims.com. That's, That's O-N-E. IMS.com. And you just, you've given us these ideas and some of these things that we can do and some next steps to have this kind of a uh, conversation with you. And so people should go now to O-N-E-I-M-S.com. And as you said, that you, you, you share these ideas freely and, and it's all out there for free, right? You can pick up a That's book, you right. can watch a YouTube, but then there's a matter of, well, do I have time in the day to apply this and that? And maybe you can, and maybe you get to the point where Solomon and his team can then really just get things really cranking on autopilot because they do this all, all day, every day, and then some. And uh, so it's time to go to oneims.com. And as we're wrapping up, winding down our conversation here, Solomon, uh, we're, we're both podcasters, right? You know how important it is to end with a bang and not a whimper. So I'd like to ask my guests about a quote or lesson that they think maybe applies to some of the advice they give. So does anything just pop out in your mind as people are going yeah. to oneims.com as far as a quote or lesson? Yeah, so I usually tell them what you can do right now to see where you are is to Google your services. And if you're only able to serve a particular city or town, put the service and the city and see who pops up. And you might not recognize any of those companies. Why? Because the competition that you're competing with 
you think it's the one that's down the street. And that's not the case. The people that you're competing with are the people that you see on the first page of Google. Because to your consumer, the guy down the street does not exist. It's really true. They don't care for Joe, right? Uh, whatever that company is. They care about who's number one. Typically, it this is happening in every industry. The big lead generation companies, they're, they're in Zillow, the real estate, home services industry has this. They're beating all of these small business to their own game. They acquire customer by running ads and they just sell it to Joe the plumber, unfortunately, because Joe plumber cannot figure out how to get customers but think that such and such lead generation company is so great. What they've done is what I'm telling every single person to do it on their own. Real estate agents buy Zillow leads, but they don't know the real estate agent. They know Zillow. Why? Because they're in front of customers. All they did is capture demand. People searching for homes near me, Zillow pops up, you click, you fill out your information. It goes to a real estate agent that cannot figure out how to do their own marketing in their town. So go to Google, do me a favor. It's free. <laughs> Search what you do. And I know it sounds crazy. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell SEO or anything. Look at what your consumer would see and figure out, man, what am I missing here? How much did that cost me for not being there? Whether in the ads or not in the ads. And that's your first step. And I think that would be really a good wake-up call for a lot of entrepreneurs to say, if you're struggling, you don't want to do more of the same thing. You want to do that because Google's already created demand. If you and I are selling a product, like this Yeti mug, and we're not on Amazon and world's largest e-commerce, right? Like, why do we need to go and create, you know, a little shop on Saturday, you know, at the farmer's market to sell my mug when I'm not there where everybody's transacting by the second? It's like, <laughs> shouldn't I be there first? That's the question you want you and I want to ask. We should be in this day and age where everything's online and that's a, a really good assignment and it might be eye-opening and it might be painful to just like search that ideal phrase and that's it's marketing 101, right? Like put yourself in the yeah. position of that that customer who has that problem, who is looking for your solution. But I, I imagine that that most people don't even do that once a year or maybe haven't even done it, maybe even ever. So it's time to do that, even though it might be a little awkward, but if you want to get different results, you have to do different things. And so we have kind of a multi-step process here, right? Step number one, go and do that Google search, no matter what your industry is or what your, your product is. And then now, once you looked at that, step number two is go to oneims.com and take that answer and say, hey, you know, I was a little bit unsettled because I thought I was, I'm, I'm 77th place. And I thought I was competing with 75th place, but really I need to be competing with the, the top five kind of uh, people in my right. area, in my search key phrase world. So help me right. do that, Solomon and his team from oneims.com. And thank you very much, Solomon, for stopping by, for giving us just so much to think about. I think like, I feel like we've done like five podcasts and one right here. I so I really appreciate what, what you fit in today. I appreciate you, Robert. Thank you for what you're doing and the impact that you're making in this world. So honored to be here.